Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about Heavy by Kiesi Lehmann. This is a memoir. It is about growing up as a black boy in Jackson, Mississippi. It's about the shame of having an overweight body. It is mostly about Kiesi's relationship with his mother, who is caring but often tyrannical. The whole book is Kiesi untangling his identity and how he's been shaped by his family, by his neighbourhood, by the state of America. And it was a fantastic, fantastic read. It's so tender, it's so honest, it's disarming, it's defiant, it's extremely powerful writing. The first thing that struck me about it is just how raw it is, how unflinching it is. He's talking so honestly, so revealingly about his relationship to his body, to sex, to gambling, and most pointedly to his mother, um, and all of the kind of shame that's wrapped up in it. And I remember like thinking about it in the shower when I was midway through reading it and thinking, God, you have to have the balls to put that out into the world and know that like thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are gonna know are gonna know that. And you can walk down the street and people will see you and anyone that looks at you, you might think, oh, they know how I feel about my body. They know how my mother used to beat me. Like, that's so terrifying. I think, yes, he's in his like mid forties now. Um, and this is kind of like from his teenage years going forward. But a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the events are still pretty raw. And publishing it when the people in the book are going to read it and have read it um, is so, admirable and I'm completely amazed about how unflinching he is. So let's talk about Kiesi's mother. She gives him all of the tools he needs to become a person who is not held down by the expectations of what a young black boy in Mississippi can accomplish. But she does it by crafting this narrative of white aggression. It's very much like you need to be the best you can be because the white folk will not let you rise above them unless you have an answer to all of their questions. Unless you're being better than everyone around you, you're never going to succeed. And that's definitely a common like parental narrative throughout the world. I think here it's like very specifically racially driven rather than just like you're the underdog and you need to be the best. It's a tricky one because like she's right. <laughs> and her impressing upon Kiesi the importance of, of learning, of knowledge, um, and of self-knowledge is, is really the thing that does elevate him to becoming a professor. And she gives him the tools to critique her way <laughs> of teaching. And it can't be denied that empowering a young person with the written word, um, with the ability to, to learn, um, is incredible but like at, at what at what expense one of the things that really hit home to me while reading this was about how um like the flaws of your parents are so much more tangible than the kind of gifts they've given you and often those flaws make themselves known like long before you can appreciate all of the gifts your parents have given you the abuse that yes he's subjected to is so much more present in his mind and kind of traumatic um, than the fact that his mum has given him this incredible gift of, of self-expression and knowledge and education and career prospects. And I think it's so easy for everyone to kind of own what they think their good qualities are. Like me, for example, I am very ambitious, I'm very creative and I'm very curious. Um, and those are things that I really are really part of my identity. <laughs> and when I think what my parents gifted me, I don't think it's those things. I think it's like my opinions about money and like the stability of relationships and those kind of things. But of course that curiosity and that ambition was cultured by them, but often in like a much less direct way than the memories you have of, of the bad things your parents did for you. There's quite an intense confrontation at the end of the book where Kiesi's mum is like, you abused me. And he's like, do you not think you abuse me? Like, do you not see all of the harm that is so present in my mind all the time that you directly did to me? And she just doesn't really. Like, she truly believes that everything she did within, was in Kiesi's best interest. And it's at that point where mother and son kind of really come together and like accept each other and their flaws and their, their past and how they've, they've really built each other, which is very heart-wrenching. But you having you know, read this book in a week, like you can still see, and you can really, really feel for that, that child Kiesi who's like suffered at the hands of his mother. And he's been like 
real Kiesi in the book by that point has had like decades of having having grown, but you're still like, no, you want to protect him. Um, and it's really hard to forgive parents. Like it feels a lot harder to forgive parents for their flaws when you're like a hundred pages forward instead of with 20 years distance. One of the things I didn't like in the book um, was that it's told in the second person, like, to his mother. Um, and from the start, that just felt far too intimate to me. Um, but kind of throughout the book, I was like, it makes perfect sense because it really is him grappling with his relationship with his mother. Um, but I just felt kind of squeamish about it. And I don't know whether that's just a kind of, like, Oedipal thing where I feel like you shouldn't everyone knows that like one of the most important relationships in your life is going to be with your mother but to kind of like admit admit that she has that much control over how you turned out kind of feels like it's taking away some agency from yourself because you didn't choose that relationship I guess that is the whole thing of, that he's grappling with but reading it in the second person felt too intimate to me but I think that's probably more of a reflection on how I would feel confronting those issues with my mother head on. Um, but yeah, I still did find that quite intense. The thing I want to leave you with is um, some writing from the last page of the book where he's had this reconciliation with his mother and then it's filled with all of these promises of how he's going to fix his life and fix her life and they're going to be great together. In that perfect spirit of reconciliation, we thought everything was possible, but in reality, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go gamble some more because that's like who I've been made to be. And it leaves us with talking about like all of this, all of this hopefulness we will share. We will find art communities, cooperatives, curriculums, justice and labor organizations committed to the love, memories and imagination of black children. We will share, we will remember, imagine and help create what we cannot find. Or it's possible that we will not remember. We will not share. We will not imagine, we will not swing back, we will not organise, we will not be honest, we will not be tender, we will not be generous, we will do what Americans do. We will abuse like Americans abuse, we will forget like Americans forget. Um, and it goes on a bit further. And it's just, it's so poignant to be like, in our hopefulness, we believe that anything is possible, but we also have to be wary that sometimes we, well, often, always, we don't actually accomplish those things. We, we get pulled back and we can't be complacent that in a mood like Black Lives Matter, like what's been happening over the last couple of months, we think that um, because we've got this like power and presence of mind now to do right by these things, that we're actually going to accomplish them. And I feel like it ends on kind of a, a warning against that complacency, but also like a hope for a better future. This is so, so powerful. I didn't even touch on the whole like bodies thing, his relationship with his weight, um, but I, that, there's so there's so much there's so much meat in this book. It is really good, um, and I would I would highly recommend it. And not just because at this moment it's important to educate ourselves um, on the black experience in America. Um, like on its own, even without all of that context, this is a phenomenal memoir. Um, really about I mean it's obviously heavily about race, but it's also about relationships. It's about our relationship to ourselves, our identity, our history. Um, and and our, our hopes and dreams for ourselves, for the, for the future of our communities. It's just it's so many things, and it's fantastic, and I implore you to read it. Um, if you have read it, please uh, give me some comments on what I've what I've missed out on on delving into here. Um, and yeah, I'll I'll chat to you down there. Hope you have a good day. See you next time.